Today we're going to talk about the most important survival bushcraft concept that is out there, in my opinion, and that is the triangle of fire. To have a complete fire, we need heat, oxygen, and fuel. Take any one away, it will not work. If you have fuel and heat with no oxygen, no fire. If you have heat and oxygen, with no fuel, no fire. If you have fuel and lots of oxygen, no fire. You need all three, and if anyone at any time disappears from the equation, you're gonna lose your fire. So let's look at a few scenarios, a bird's nest with an ember. So the ember would be the heat. The fuel would be the material. In our case, let's say it's tulip poplar bark. And we add oxygen into that mix. So that's how the triangle of fire would create fire at that point. Now, if we would take any one of those things away, let's say we put an ember into a bird's nest and just let it sit, we don't add oxygen, we're not gonna have fire. Likewise, if we don't have an ember, also known as heat, we can have all the tulip poplar bark in the world and blow on it all day and we're never gonna get fire. Same thing if we have an ember and we keep blowing on it, we're not gonna get fire because we don't have any fuel source. So that's just a quick breakdown of how we would look at that. So let's look at another scenario. Let's look at a wet weather fire. We created a fire lay, we lit a match, and stuck it underneath the wood pile. So we have a couple things going on there, and this is how I break things down in my head when I'm doing them in the field. First, we lit that match, so we know we have a heat source. We're good. I know I created a fire lay, so I have some fuel, and if I have it built correctly, I have an oxygen flow blowing in there. I shouldn't have to blow on the fire lay but a lot of times you'll put that match there and it won't ignite the wood. So let's break that down a little bit further. What happened at that point? Well, let's look at fuel. Our fuel might not be small enough. We might have a big log laying there or two big sticks laying there and the heat source is just not hot enough. So we have a mixture between heat and fuel. We have a mixture going on there of things not working correctly. So we need to think about what we need to change. In that case, we would need to change our fuel source Therefore, our heat can heat that up and we have ourselves a fire. Scenario number three, what we're going to look at is a friction fire. So you're, you make a bow drill set and you start to spin that spindle and we're trying to create an ember. In a sense, you're trying to create a mini fire. Now, of course, we don't have flame at that point, but we're still trying to create a fire. So we need to look at a couple different things. Number one, we have fuel because we created a spindle and a board, and it's creating dust. If it's not creating dust, maybe we don't have fuel. But let's say we're creating dust and we're getting some smoke. At that point, we have fuel, we have heat, but if we're not getting that ember, two things might be happening. Number one, we might not have enough oxygen. Number two, we might not be spinning the spindle fast enough, creating enough heat. Or number three, the wood, also known as fuel, is just not working the way we need it to because maybe it's a little bit damp, or maybe it's a little bit rotted, so it's not the correct fuel source. So you need to be able to evaluate this stuff quick and in a hurry when you're making these fire lays or making any type of fire because it's gonna allow you to troubleshoot what's actually happening. So that was a few scenarios that incorporated the triangle of fire. This is a very important concept. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is really what advanced bushcrafters, advanced survivalists are doing when they create fire. And we look at them and we think, man, they're like a fire master. They understand this. They understand before they even make a fire lay or they make a bow drill set, they understand this and they're thinking about this the whole time they're doing it. While they're trying to create that fire, be it spinning a spindle or lighting a match or striking a ferro rod, they're thinking about this. And when those fires start to sizzle out or not burn as well as they need to, we're thinking about this again. So it's a constant evolution. You're thinking about this. Some people just don't know technically what's happening sort of behind the scenes, but this is what's going on. So if you break it down constantly into these three modalities, you'll get a fire just about every single time. When you run in that situation that you don't get it, go back to the drawing board, think about this, and I guarantee you over time, you're gonna be able to evaluate your fire lay and get that fire when you need it. This was Dan Wolak with Coalcracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, a little bit more educational, but it's something super important. I like to teach it at all my classes because it really truly is the foundation of bushcraft and survival. If you haven't already, check us out over at coalcrackerbushcraft.com. And until the next video, stay in the woods, guys.